serial communication using Arduino. In this video, I'm going to cover the basic functions of serial communication and end with a demonstration of connecting Arduino Uno to Arduino Mega via serial. The idea for this video came from seeing the same question asked and the confusing and contradicting answers people give to them. So I hope by the end of this video I will cover those basic and make it as clear as possible. Let's start with the first step, the serial begin. This is the function that starts a serial service. And the number between the brackets is the baud rate. Why is it so important? Because this is the speed that the serial will communicate at. And trying to communicate in any other baud rate will result in either a blank or a gibberish output. Note what happens in this example when the baud rate isn't the right one. If I change it back to the right baud rate, we're now getting the hello world. The next thing I want to cover is the serial print versus serial write and the way the data is transferred in both methods. Side note, whatever I say about print goes of course for print, L, print line new, just added with a slash r and slash n in the end to get a line break in the output. Now let me demonstrate to you the next issue people encounter. Data conversion between what data type you send and how to how you read that data and display it on the receiving end. As you can see, both the print function 64 and 65 Again, the same result on the screen, meaning I got a 64 as a number and a 65 as a number here. The reason for that is that the print function will take any value you feed into it and change it into the string representation, which is what the IDE monitor tool is expecting. Here is the serial print reference page. Data types and their string representation format. Now, on the other hand, the write function of 66 produced a B on the screen. And the reason for that is that unlike the print function, the write function sends the byte value as is without any conversion. I'm sure this is still a bit, if not a lot, confusing, especially if you never dealt with data conversion before. On top of that, you only see the output and not the actual data getting transmitted. So let's reverse the roles. And I'll be sending data from the serial monitor to the Arduino and parsing it out. We'll take this example and run it. Now, I'll be sending 165 from the serial monitor to the Arduino and I get a strange four bytes result. Now, remember I told you that the serial print turns everything into strings. So does the monitor tool. So we get three characters, one for each of the digits. Now, since we read and display a byte, we see their ASCII value. In order to explain the fourth byte, I have to take a small detour and go over this dropdown that is responsible of adding or not an extra characters at the end of the message you send. In our case, it's set to new line, which is slash n or escape n, with the ASCII value of 10. I uncommented this line and this line. Note that now, each value is corresponding to the char casting of the number. So I send 165 and you can see 165 and the new line here. Some systems will pass numeric data as a string and not as its value. The Arduino is giving us some tools converted during the ring process. The two are parse int and parse float. Both will take a string representation of a value and turn it into the actual value in a specific data type. In this example, we enter a numeric value in the serial monitor and use parseInt to read it and convert it into an integer. We then display the value entered times 2 back. Now that we covered all of this, let's put it into use. In order for two systems to talk to each other, they need to have some forms of a communication rules. The first one is to know that we are reading a start of a message. Therefore, you will often see a starting characters that will mark just that. Then the receiving end needs to know when to stop reading. In most cases, that can be achieved by an adding an end character. The other option is to let the receiver know how many bytes it needs to read. So in some cases, the first value after the starting characters will be the length of the message. Or decide in advance on a fixed message size like I do in my example. Since errors can and will happen, one more thing that can be added in order to keep data integrity is a checksum. 
a way to make sure we got the data correctly by performing math on the received data. I will send in advance that the example I'm about to show you can be done in many other ways. It's just one way that I chose out of many options. In this example, we'll be sending the UDO analog read value of pin A0 to the serial every 250 milliseconds. The data message will have a fixed bytes format with two opening bytes, 253 and 255, followed by the lower byte and then upper byte of the integer, that is the value of reading the analog, and then last is the checksum. I connected the TX and RX, share the ground, and I have a potentiometer. The reason for serial 1 is serial for debug. On the Mega, we wait for serial 1 data to be available. We read the data into a buffer and keep an index on the buffer position. If a message was not started and it's at least 2 bytes long, we look for two starting bytes, the 253 and 255 in a row, to mark the start of the message. Once found, we set the message started flag to true and we reset the index. We then read the three bytes of the known message size, compare the data to the checksum, and if it matches, we rebuild the integer from its two bytes parts and output it via the serial monitor. Last, we reset the message starts flag to false to start looking for the next message. This can be done with even bigger data types like long and with more than one parameter at a time, as long as you keep the right format. I hope this covered some of your basic questions on how to use serial. If you didn't do it till now, please subscribe, give us a thumb up, leave a comment, and see you next time.